We'll call the 21st regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Here. Bird? Here. Bonet? Here. Doyle? Here. Graf? Here. Manny? Here. Montemayor? Here. Moody? Here. Perez? Here. Rinfeich? Excused. Stephan? Here. Van Akron? Excused. Vanderwill? Here. Wangaman? Excused. Warner? Here. Weininger? Here. 13 present. Quorum's present. Alderman Graf? You know, I'll move that we dispense with the reading of the minutes of the previous Common Council meeting in the same stand, in the same stand approved as entered on the record. Motion has been made and seconded that we dispense with the meeting minutes of the previous Council meeting under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Pledge of Allegiance? Alderman Burke? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> we have a hearing, this two hearings, as a matter of fact, the first one will be Rezoning property located at 709, 715, 723, 725, and 733 Georgia Avenue, and 1405 and 1407 South A Street. Any, any interested persons wishing to be heard on the hearings? Any interested persons wishing to be heard on the hearings? If you'd like to say anything, please step up to the microphone. Name and address. Name and address, please. My name is Todd Wolf. I'm here to represent Sheboygan Paper Box. I'm the plant manager. Um, we have just a few things that we wanted to say with the uh, rezoning. This is to help improve um, the pot potential possibility for a Sheboygan Paper Box to expand. And we are looking at expanding to improve our ability to uh, bring more jobs into the area and maintain the ability to um, assist our fellow manufacturers in, in uh, keeping business in, in the city of Sheboygan. Also in, by hiring more people and um, also looking at trying to increase the tax revenue that we all know we all love. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Alderman Groff. The hearing be closed. Move to the second that the hearing be closed. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Next one, we have a quasi-judicial hearing. It's a proposed revocation of tavern license number 2205 held by Joseph R. Wagner. Alderman Doyle. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to review uh, with the Common Council the reason for the hearing tonight. Uh, the state allows Sheboygan to issue 110 Class B liquor licenses. All 110 have been issued. We have an ordinance in place which states that if a license is inactive for more than six months, the council has the right to revoke the license after a public hearing. El Camino Restaurant has been given the right to apply for the license presently held by Mr. Wagner. There is at least one more restaurant wanting to apply for a license. Scores, a bar in the Baxter building, closed six months ago. The owner of that property, Mr. Wagner, has the license now. Mr. Wagner uh, first orally agreed to give up the license, causing us to go through the process of calling in El Camino Restaurant and Garden View Restaurant. Then he changed his mind and refused to follow through on the oral promise, thus costing us not only the time involved in preparing for this hearing and the expense of outside counsel, but also the service and postage fees involved, plus any overtime that was involved. According to the Code of Ethics for Attorneys, the city cannot use our attorneys for both sides. Therefore, outside legal counsel must be hired for this hearing. Uh, at this point, I'll turn it over to Chuck Adams, Assistant City Attorney, to carry out the procedures. Thank you. Um, and I'm going to uh, introduce uh, Attorney Joel Volkner. Um, 
he uh, is here um, to basically to represent uh, the interests of, of the council. I'm here to uh, represent basically the interests of the city in, in prosecuting uh, this action. And is uh, Mr. Wagner here? He appears not to be here. Uh, just very briefly, um, Alderman Doyle has stated to you already um, most of the facts, uh, the complaint. Uh, alleges that the uh, business has uh, been inactive for more than six months, and that is in fact the case. Um, and uh, Section 10-46 is the ordinance that says that that may be uh, that, that the Common Council may uh, revoke the license for inactivity of six months or greater. Um, the uh, Code of Ordinances also provide that. Um, Based on the non-appearance of the licensee, uh, the Common Council does have the ability to simply to take the facts as alleged in the complaint as true and act on them. And the complaints are just uh, the facts in the complaint are just simply uh, that uh, Joseph Wagner is the holder of the license number 2205, um, and that uh, the, as holder of the license, they have suspended or ceased doing business for uh, more than six uh, consecutive months. Thus, the request is to revoke um, the Class B and Class B tavern licenses of Joseph Wagner. Thank you. Uh, normally, if uh, Mr. Wagner had appeared uh, with attorney or whatever, uh, we would adjourn uh, to a closed session down in the third floor conference room. But since he hasn't shown up and the case has been clearly explained, I don't see the need to go into closed session unless uh, some of the aldermen feel that uh, they do have issues that want to be that they want to have discussed in uh, in closed session. Is there anyone that would like to have closed session? Uh, if that's the case, I think I'll turn it over to City Clerk Pat Losey and have her call the roll on the. Uh, and how should that be stated, Chuck? The, it would just be simply a, uh, a motion to uh, revoke uh, the uh, license. I move that we revoke the license of Mr. Wagner. Under discussion. Hearing none, Pat, would you call the roll? Berg? Aye. Bonnie? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Groff? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Stephen? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. To close the hearing. Need a motion to close the hearing? To close the hearing? Uh, could I move that we close the hearing. Okay. Move to second to close the hearing under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Public forum, Pat? No one. Okay. There's no one here for the public forum, so I'm just going to take a moment before we move on to the consent agenda to read something here. It has been brought to my attention that some individuals in our community are opposed to my plans to work with the water utility to speed up the long-range plans to install additional intake pipe. An adequate water supply is the lifeblood of our community, not only for individual health, but also for business and industrial job maintenance and creation and community fire protection. The Sheboygan Water Utility already has plans to install an additional intake pipe. However, before this can be accomplished, there are other facilities which must be replaced which will require a lengthy design and approval process. My intent is to do what we can to speed this process and remove the threat of another water emergency as quickly as possible. I think all our citizens, businesses, and industrial users would support this proactive stand. Results, not rhetoric, are the benchmark for which elected officials are judged. Public safety and, a, and the ability to conduct our daily business must be given priority and not politicized. I must also point out that the water utility projects are funded through water revenue and that all water utility capital investments are typically funded through the state's state safe drinking water loans or water revenue bonds. No charges appear on the property tax bill. Again, no charges appear on the property tax bill. 
Any public input or concerns on future needs of the water utility should be directed to the Citizens Board of the Water Commissioners, which makes policy decisions regarding the operation of Sheboygan Water Utility. The Sheboygan Common Council does not set or approve their budget. Thank you. Okay, with that, consent agenda, Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, that would be items 21-1 through 21-18. I would move that <clears throat> all our C's be accepted and adopted, all our O's be accepted and filed, and we pass all resolutions. Move to second that all our O's be accepted and filed, all our C's be accepted and adopted, and the resolutions be put up under passage, under discussion. Alderman Warner. I thank Your Honor. Uh, I guess I would just like clarification from Public Works, maybe Tom Holton, on document 2117, uh, the Motor Vehicle Division sewer jetter, just exactly what that is and what its function is. Hang on a minute, Tom. We're getting some. Hang on. Okay, try it now. That piece of equipment's used for cleaning uh, our sanitary sewers mainly and also catch basin leads and some storm sewers. Uh, the one we have now is, I think it's on about a 25 year old vehicle uh, that's shot. We got from the wastewater plant many years ago. Uh, and we didn't go with low bid, low bid did not meet spec. So we went with the second bid, which I believe was about $10,000 higher. I don't have the document in front of me. But it's mainly for ensuring that we don't have uh, backups or sanitary sewers. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to make a comment with respect to uh, item 21-3. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. 21-3. And what I'd like to say, Your Honor, is that I would uh, like to applaud the 2,355 citizens who took time to convey to us uh, their message of, uh, of concerns of uh, for, uh, for the city of Sheboygan. It is uh, critical that we get input from citizens and such, uh, although they may have failed to secure the uh, correct number of signatures, they did not fail in delivering a message to, I think, all of us that uh, there are some serious concerns in the, in the, in the community. And uh, I, for one, would like to thank them for their efforts to, to do so. Anyone else wishing to be heard? If not, Pat, would you call the roll? Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Graf? Aye. Lanny? Aye. Montemere? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Stephen? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Wenninger? Aye. Fowlman? Aye. Bird? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. There seems to be some feedback in the mics tonight, and I only have two on, so therefore we shouldn't be having that difficulty. I don't know if we can adjust it in the back or what's going on, but please bear with us. 2119 will be referred. Alderman Stephan. Okay. 2120 lies over. 2121 through 2127 to be referred. 2128 by Alderman Stephan, amending resolution which established a public forum so as to restrict council members from registering and speaking as part of a public comment and deal with abuse. Alderman Stephan. I would move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Moved and second, the resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Under discussion, I just wanted to give you a little history. Um, this originally they brought in a resolution that had three five minute periods. Then it was in 1999, I believe it was changed to make it five five minute periods. And that's really all it says. And all this is is there's really two components here. One is it hasn't been a problem this year, but it was a problem for me in past years with aldermen who decide they have something to say and don't want to stand up and say it from here. So they sign up for the public forum. And I feel that's wrong that you're taking the spot that is reserved for the public. 
Uh, if we want to say something, we can certainly tell the mayor, and he will recognize us before the meeting, after the meeting, depending upon where it falls in. So I don't feel aldermen should have that privilege of that should be for the public forum, and that, that's the first part of this change. The second part of the change is um, been a little disappointed at the public forum this year, at the, and actually the council too, and hopefully with our ethics we'll learn more about how to treat each other and what's right and what's wrong. But it seems like I don't have a problem with people coming to the public forum and telling us we're wrong, we're doing something wrong, not a problem, but I don't feel there should be personal attacks. And all this does is, is spell that out because when I was on the county board, it was very clear you had to speak with respect, you had to speak to the body. We didn't have that language in our, in our public forum resolution. And I just think this puts it there. It says, um, the presiding officer decides that the comments are not relevant to city government, are abusive or of a personal attack. The presiding officer may order the speaker to modify his or her comments, order the speaker to refrain from speaking and forfeit the remainder of their time, or take such other steps as may be necessary. You know, all it is is to get away from the attacking one person, attacking this person. You know, if you've got a problem and you, or you want to bring up ideas, that's what the public forum is for. We're here to hear your concerns. I have no problem with that. But I just think we have to let the citizens know that they should speak to the body, they should criticize the body, and there shouldn't be a personal attack session for political motivation. And that's why I brought this forward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, may I ask Alderman Stephan a question? Sure. Thank you. Um, I had wondered what the impetus was for you to ask for this, because as long as I've been here, only Alderman Warner has spoken, and he signed up with Pat and went to the other side and didn't seem to be any problem at all. Right. And I thought we as citizens should also be able to do that. It seemed to be no problem. Um, as to the other, well, it seemed to me perhaps there were some hard feelings back and forth this year, but nothing we couldn't take. And it was perhaps on our side, perhaps on the public side, but that's what we're here for, to take that sort of criticism speech. Thank you. Can I answer that? Sure. Yes. Um, I have no problem, like I said, with criticism. I just, you know, somebody, not to pick on Mike Warner, but, you know, singled him out with what I thought was an abusive shot that had no business being said. I can, you know, I just think we all deserve to treat each other. We're not going to agree on everything, but we, we deserve to treat each other with the dignity with, that this office, you know, holds. And I would, how do we expect the public to show that to us if we don't do it amongst ourselves? So, I, you know, I think this is the beginning to tell them. I'm not afraid of hearing criticism from everybody. Same thing with people call me on the phone. They can tell me anything they want, but if they get abusive, they're certainly not going to be talking to me for very long. And that's the whole idea behind this. And, like, and I was clear that this year wasn't the problem with the Alderman speaking there. It was in the past. Yes. Thank you for making that clear to me. Alderman Doyle. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, <clears throat> I favor the Alderman thing, but I'm totally opposed to the second part. And maybe it's my imagination, but uh, I've been on the council for four years, and I believe that the mayor and common council have accomplished much. There has been lots of criticism of some of the common council decisions, but this is America, and criticism is to be expected and is healthy. In recent months, I have sensed that the common council and the mayor are becoming overly sensitive to criticism, and I consider this to be unhealthy. In my four years on the council, I have not heard one public forum speaker who has been abusive or who has violated our country's principles of free speech. The resolution we are considering appears to be a signal to the public, really, that they're not that welcome here. Now, where did I get the idea that the council is, and the mayor is becoming sensitive? Well, start off with the mayor uh, with the room tax issue. When uh, Dulcie Johnson and the others were complaining about the room tax, the mayor's son came in and gave three what I call pit bull type speeches, basically that were putting down those people that were complaining. Then Henry Capitillo on the uh, stormwater fees, when he complained about those, I felt that the alderman literally rushed when he came in with his uh, building renovation proposal to get rid of that. Alderman Warner gave a speech during the public forum in which he was critical of a previous mayor who had written something to the letter to the uh, press. Now we've received this letter from uh, a relative who I've heard is a relative of one of the common council members questioning the ethics of three unidentified aldermen who she says should be investigated for being anti-city, whatever that means. And now we have this resolution to control the public forum to prevent us from being abused verbally. Well, 
has this strategy of uh, striking back at the critics calm things down in Sheboygan? Well, let me list the things that have happened in response to this. We've had an editorial in the press about it. Jerry Bader on WHBL had a, a forum where he talked about uh, are, is the mayor and the council becoming uh, too squeamish about criticism. The city now has a lawsuit against it. A community group has been formed against city government. The mayor has had ethics charges filed against him. Petitions were circulated to control common council actions. All of this is, has been, as I see it, in response to these efforts to sort of ignore the community. Now, the common council efforts to suppress critics will backfire and create more opposition. As a leader, no matter how good you are, lots of people will dislike you, they will dislike your programs, and you might as well accept that fact and go on with life. For example, look at Howard Dean, the Democratic candidate for president. He had a big lead in the polls and was being endorsed by everyone. When the other eight candidates criticized him mercilessly, he cracked under the strain and attacked his critics. Now the Democratic voters have rejected him as a leader because he can't handle criticism. The same thing happens in city governments if actions like this resolution continue. It's time to stop focusing on the critics and get on with city business. Thank you. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I am going to vote against his resolution um, for, for uh, philosophical reasons uh, that, that I have, uh, and also because I see the, the resolution uh, as, as a little vague, or actually quite vague, um, comments not relevant to city government. Does that eliminate presentations? Does that eliminate congratulating our, our employees? That, that too, too vague. Abusive is a relative word. Personal attack is a relative word. Uh, as Alderman uh, Doyle has said, you can turn a TV on tonight and you're going to hear people hitting the, the United States president. If he can take it, I don't know why we can't. If I can't take it, and the day comes when I can't take it, I'm not going to run for Alderman anymore. You guys can have it out at yourselves. Turn on the radio tomorrow. You're going to hear Madison at it. They're going to be at each other tomorrow. It's been all over the radio today. Um, the chair has ample discretion to declare community input or any type of debate out of order. We've never <coughs> abused that. Aldermen have been pretty good lately. In the, in the time that I've been here, I don't know that there's been too many aldermen to get up there and take up the, uh, the time of the public. But if I take off my city alderman hat and I want to talk to this council as Juan Perez, a taxpayer, you can't deny me that right. You cannot. I don't have to come here as an alderman. I can stand right there as Juan Perez, the taxpayer. And this resolution attempts to do that. You cannot do it. A citizen said to me this weekend that the people of Sheboygan have nothing to fear except our fearful government. More and more people, including myself, are becoming increasingly concerned with this city's council's seemingly quick willingness to overregulate speech, if not stifle it. Even the best intended act of controlling debate or citizen input can quickly become a brutal aversion to free speech. What is this council afraid of? In several instances, I have heard of city officials at various levels attempting to suppress political speech unpopular to them. In some instances, they did, simply, they did so simply because they feared the speaker or the message or public reaction. In other instances, it was simply a matter of having the power to do so. No reasonable person would argue against any rules of just behavior. It is not in our interest to do so. However, the dominance of prevailing opinion and attitude can sometimes confer a false legitimacy of the majority who wants to impose its own opinions and practices as rules of just behavior on those citizens who disagree with them. I fear this may be the case tonight. I cannot support any form of censorship on free speech. I cannot support any retaliatory act that would silence a person of ordinary firmness and principle from speaking against this administration if that person does not agree with the way this administration manages their hard-earned money. In my mind, this, is not only, this, is, this not only involves free speech, it targets it. 
We cannot protect our own right of free speech by denying it to those who don't agree with us. To do so simply because the overbearing majority of this city council has the votes to do it does not make it right. The true, the true test of effective government that is sensitive to the needs of the people it governs lies in its ability to govern itself. By intolerably, intolerably ignoring and thwarting the right of our citizens to speak freely and without censorship, in my mind, effectively creates a tyranny of the majority. If this resolution passes tonight, the message is clear. If you're not a part of the majority of the city council, if you're not sympathetic to the majority of the city council, then you are irrelevant and you just don't matter. And if that is not the case, someone please make me in this community feel otherwise. Thank you. All in order. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. I guess I, I strongly disagree with Alderman Perez's position. I don't think this document restricts public's right to speak at the council at all. In fact, I think it makes it more appropriate and provides a greater area for them to speak. I fought to get these five positions on here in 1999. Me and Joel, and, and, and now State Senator Joel Ibim and a few other people fought to get these five things opened up. It used to only be three. So don't tell me that by passing this, we'd be restricting free speech. First, I think that when repeated attacks are made on people on this council floor, sooner or later, they have to answer it. And in the case of the mayor, you can go back and look at the minutes of the meetings. The people who were attacking him attacked him numerous times, not just once, not just twice. The fourth, fifth, sixth time, probably, before something started to be done about it from people who felt differently than they did. That's their free speech. First, I think this is a good idea. As an older person, I once spoke at a public forum. I debated with myself as to whether or not it was the right thing to do. On one hand, I'm an elected public official. And I do agree with Alderman Prez on this. On the other, I'm a taxpaying resident of the city and a voter. However, as an older person, I can ask the mayor to allow me to speak here. I don't have to take time up there. Perhaps that was an error on my fault. I'm willing to accept it. I know my partner here did not care for me doing it, and he actually voted against me doing it, I believe, or else he let me know that after we were done. But I guess as all the persons, we can ask the providing officer at council meetings to allow us to speak on any issue. We do it in our committee meetings. Perhaps that is the best course to take should one desire to address the council or the public from their chair as an older person. I also think that when a member of the public wishes to speak in the forum, what they speak on should be relative to city government or the state or national interests. As a recipient, of what I would call a personal attack by someone util utilizing the public forum just last December, I believe it is important to allow some standards or rules to be employed as long as they do not infract upon the rights of legitimate citizens to be heard. Our common council meetings as well as our committee meetings are for discussion on the issues at hand, debate on their merits and decisions that affect everyone. It is only proper that the presiding officer have the ability to ensure that these decisions, or discussions and debates are on the subject at hand and pertinent to it. The work we have been elected to do should not be taken lightly and those that disagree on principle should be allowed to speak. But they should also be held to the minimum standard of being pertinent to the issue and not being allowed to bring personal attacks against individuals upon the council floor or any other committee meeting. There are other avenues for them to air their disagreements, such as the radio or the newspaper. We should respect the process and ensure public access in a civil and orderly fashion, just like we are supposed to behave here in an ethical manner. Sometimes it's hard to treat your fellow older persons with all the respect you would like to give to them because you disagree. That's normal. But you don't make personal attacks upon them, and we shouldn't do that. And I think we shouldn't allow the podium to be used for personal attacks either. I think uh, this resolution will address that. I don't think it stifles free speech in any way, shape, or form. And if you read it, it clearly doesn't. Yes, go ahead. A yes. um, couple comments. Uh, I spoke with uh, Alderman Stefan a couple of times, well, emailed, uh, regarding the content of this document. That he indicated what his... Uh, uh, 
desire was, and uh, he asked if I would uh, assist him in, in drafting the document. Uh, I'd like to speak on that portion that deals with the uh, presiding officer being able to uh, control the council meeting. Um, that's language that I found, and it comes not from any uh, nefarious sources or intentions. It comes from the model guidelines for the conduct of common council meetings that's published by the League of Wisconsin Municipalities. It has this language uh, basically word for word uh, as far as the conduct of the, uh, the public forums. Now, the council has, and this is strictly a council, uh, internal council uh, policy <coughs> as to whether to allow public forums and, and how to uh, conduct them. And uh, clearly the council has had a public forum for a number of years and has gotten along fine without having that provision in it. Uh, but to the extent that the request was made to, uh, to have something in our resolution that uh, uh, more clearly defines what the presiding officer's uh, uh, role is, um, this language, as I say, was taken out of uh, some model guidelines put together by the League of Wisconsin Municipalities. Um, there was a comment made about the comments not relevant to city government, and where that's taken from is the, uh, the current resolutions that the council has adopted to establish the public forum, make that as the, uh, the framework in which the comments are to be provided, that they're, they need to be relevant to city government. Uh, we had some discussion, uh, Alderman Stefan and I did, with, with respect to whether or not the comments ought to relate to a matter on the specific agenda. And if they, if they did not, uh, whether they would be uh, permitted or not. Alderman Stefan felt uh, that we ought to maintain what we currently have, that uh, citizens could speak on any topic as long as it fell within the uh, purview of being relevant to city government and not necessarily being on a particular agenda. Uh, but that's, that's where that uh, latter language came from. It's no intent to, uh, to attack any uh, individuals or groups or anything like that. Okay. Pat, would you call the roll? Oh, excuse me. Alderman Manning. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I agree with the first resolution and believe that we in the council have full latitude to speak uh, in the normal course of our meetings, and thus we don't need public forum. Uh, secondarily, I, um, at this point in time, would like to err on the side of openness and freedom of, of speech and let people say what they want to say. And if, in fact, down the line it becomes a problem, that we then deal with it. At this point, part of that is uh, perhaps perception. <coughs> I don't think we're intending to control, but perhaps it's perceived that way. And I'd rather err on the side of openness uh, at this point in time. Thank you. No other discussion. Would you call the roll, please? Doyle? No. Groff? No. Manny? No. Montemayor? No. Moody? No. Perez? No. Stephan? Aye. Vanderwill? No. Warner? Aye. Wenninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? No. Bonet? Aye. Six eyes, seven no's. Motion failed. Okay, we'll move on. 2129 through 2131 will lie over. 2132 and 33 to be referred. 2134, by public protection and safety, recommending denying taxi cab driver's license 6268 based on a lack of cooperation with the committee. Alderman Doyle. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I move that we accept and adopt the report of committee. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, is Mr. Schmidt here to speak in this? On behalf? He isn't, Your Honor. You can proceed. Okay. Would you like to make a motion to put upon a penalty? Oh, excuse me. Uh, with that, if there's no other discussion, Pat, call the roll, please. Groff? Aye. Manny? Aye. Ma Montemayor? Aye. <laughs> Sorry about that. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. 
Warner? Aye. Winninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 2135 will lie over. 2136 to be referred. 2033 and 2037 is communication, submitting a communication from Donna Godsucker opposing the paper box rezoning and the City Plan Commission recommending amending the zoning of property located at 709, 715, 723, 25, and 733 Georgia Avenue and 1405 and 1407. Alderman Warner, Plan Commission. Well, thank you, Your Honor. On uh, 2033, that one I would move uh, to accept and file. Okay. They go together. They go together. Okay. Uh, and on the RO, on that I would move, I make a motion to accept and file the report of officer and that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Okay, we have a motion before us, so accept and file 2033 and on 2037, accept and file the RO and the general ordinance be put upon its passage under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, in 2033, uh, Ms. Godsucker did get to address the plan commission at our January 13th meeting. Uh, we heard her concerns. She is on vacation at this time, I believe, in Florida for a couple months, so she wanted to make sure she could come to the commission and, and discuss her concerns with the neighborhood there. Uh, for the other item, Your Honor, uh, the RO under discussion, uh, the properties that are being rezoned are owned by Sheboygan Paper Box and they're on the same block as the plant, so they don't leave the block that it's on. The, the company owns those homes, and they are planning on expanding their operation, and they will use those property, the properties there for that purpose. Uh, Sheboygan Paper Box will have to come back before the commission and the architectural review board prior to any building on the site to, to get their plans verified and, uh, and uh, architectural review. The rezoning is recommended by the plan commission. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'll answer my question. Okay. Thank you. If there's no other discussion, would you call the roll, please? Manny? Aye. Monomayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Winninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Groff? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. Thank you for coming in, gentlemen. 2035, RO by City Plan Commission, recommending the sale of a city lot at 3606 Mill Road to Ralph and Connie Worm. Alderman Warner. I think I may take 2051. Sure. Right after that, too. So on uh, 2035, I would make a motion to accept and file the report of officer. Do it all together in one motion. And on uh, the resolution, I would move the resolution be put upon its passage. Moving in second, our will be accepted and filed and the resolution be put upon this passage under discussion. Under discussion, Your, Your Honor, the uh, RO uh, just will ensure that the proper documents are drawn up to sell the property to Ralph and Connie Worm. And on the resolution, Your Honor, this is a sale of city-owned property, parcel number 629395 to Ralph and Connie Worm. That property is the property that's just off of 21st Street by the new bridge that goes over Pigeon River. It would actually be to the west of there. Uh, this sale is a result of the long-term effort by the city under the direction of the mayor to return unused and unneeded city-owned property to the tax rolls, thus easing the cost to the taxpayers for maintenance and expanding our tax base, and the commission, commission recommends approval. Thank you. There's another discussion. Oh, excuse me. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, just a comment for the council. Uh, there have been a couple of these that passed in 2003 and uh, just so the council's aware when we do the title check we find that there's a reason why some of these properties and I'm not saying anything about this property because I think this is a totally different situation but uh, when, when you check these out these little remnants and things there are reasons why they they're remnants and they've been hanging out for 30 and 40 and 50 years so uh, there's oftentimes a lot of thorny sort of title issues uh, where there were railroad tracks running through the city at one time or something like that and the railroad tracks were removed and these had been made dead ends and uh, there are a couple that the council authorized sales of that we did the title checks and uh, there was it's unclear as to whether we even have 
now a title that we can transfer. Um, so that's why there's reference in here to including the title report search. Uh, we're doing those before we transfer title. If there are issues, uh, we raise them with the uh, prospective purchaser and and get some resolution as to whether they still want to proceed. But uh, uh, this one I, I know is a separate situation over uh, by uh, Sadoff and Rudoy there and may, may be fine, but uh, just to let the council know that this doesn't necessarily mean that these all these transactions are going real smooth because, uh, as I say, uh, that's why a lot of them have been hanging around on the city rolls for, for quite some time. Gives us the opportunity to address them, though, to 300 parcels that were out there, so it's a good thing. Yeah, and it, it was just felt it's not worth doing title checks on all these parcels up front if nobody's even interested in them anyway. We do the title checks if somebody comes forward and says they'd like to buy it, and then then we investigate and see if there are issues. Alderman Warner. I think uh, one other point that I, I did fail to mention is not only do the people when they buy these pay for the property, but they also are responsible for all closing costs and they pay for the title search, so it's not a the taxpayers aren't paying for the title search on a property. It's one of the costs that the prospective buyer takes care of. Okay, what's that? Would you call the roll, please? Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Vanderbilt? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weniger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Groff? Aye. Manny? Aye. 13 eyes. Motion carried. 2036. RO 4660304 by Industrial Development Commission regarding the repurchase of lot 8F in Sheboygan Business Park from ILR Tooling. And the next document, she said, okay. And also 2052 resolution by Alderman Vanderweele, Manny, Montemayor, Stefan, and Bonet authorizing the repurchase of lot 8F in the Sheboygan Business Center. Alderman Vanderweele. Thank you, Honor. Is it, do we want to accept and adopt this? Accept and file arrow on 2036 and pass the resolution on 2052. I'll make a motion to accept and file. The and pass resolution. And pass resolution 2052. Moved and second that we accept and, and file the arrow on 2036 and pass the resolution on 2052. Is there any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Moody. Perez, Stefan, Vanderwill, Warner, Aye. Weininger, Aye. Bauman, Aye. Berg, Bonet, Aye. Doyle, Groff, Manny, Monomayor, 13 eyes. Motion carried. 2055, resolution by Alderman Groff, Warner, Stefan, and Doyle, and Bonet transfer appropriations in the 2004 budget. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, that resolution, which is for establishing estimated revenue and appropriations for the Office of Justice Grant, and 2056, which is a resolution to authorize the transfer of appropriations in the 2004 budget, which increases appropriations in the amount of $121,147 for police overtime, and 2057, which is a uh, resolution authorizing a transfer of funds to provide monies for the establishment of the appropriation in the general fund for for professional services for boiler replacement study at the municipal service building and 2058 which is a resolution to authorize a transfer of funds to provide monies to establish estimated revenue and appropriations for donations received for the canine expenses and 2059 which is a resolution to authorize a transfer of funds to provide monies to establish appropriations for the city clerk municipal code supplements. I would move that all resolutions be put upon their passage. Move to second that all the resolutions be put upon their passage. Is there any discussion out of any? Alderman Fallon. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to call for a separate vote on 2059. I'll offer discussion at that time. Okay. Is there any other one? If not, let's take everything but 2059. Pat, would you call the roll? Perez? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weininger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. 
Groff? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carry. 2059. Alderman Bowman. Thank you, Your Honor. Could I address the uh, city clerk, please? Pat, uh, concerning the municipal code supplements, uh, the $3,000 expenditure, uh, several weeks ago we did receive a uh, notice that stated that we will no longer be offered these whatsoever and we should go online more or less to access the municipal code. So where are these codes that you are receiving going? We are not going to be receiving any codes. This is the cost that will, let me back up. The hard copy we paid for, plus we paid $300 a year to go on the website, the internet. When we decided not to go with the hard copies anymore, it doesn't mean we can go with $300 for the website. It means our per page cost goes down $2.25. We still pay $19 a page for our supplements on the website, no hard copies. We do not have to pay, of course, for um, comparable pages, index pages. Uh, we save about 20 some pages per supplement at $21 a piece. Yeah. But we do have to pay extra money because they still do the work. Okay. We found that out after the fact. Wow. Well, anyway. I thought it would cost us $300. It still will cost us probably $33, $3,500 a year. Wow. Rather good. than the 5000 that I usually ask for. That's good. Well, anyway, thank you very much. Okay. Hold on. Perez? Aye. Stephen? Aye. Vanderwill? Aye. Warner? Aye. Wenninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 2138 will go to finance. 2139 mm -hmm. will go to redevelopment authority. Steve, other matters? Um, I have. Oh, excuse okay. me. Go ahead. I thought I was told finance on 39. I have a redevelopment authority. Oh, okay. Okay. Very good. Okay. 2140 is communication from Marion Martinez. Uh, relative considering cutting the hours and buses and use the money for the library. You can tell where it's going. Oh, finance, excuse me, yes. Okay. 2141 is a summons and complaint in the matter of Gary Van S and Linda Van S versus BR Associates et al. for alleged injuries received by Gary Van S when he slipped and fell on an icy sidewalk. Special Committee on Risk Management. 2142 is a claim from Stephen Peterman for alleged damages to the back window of his truck when it was broken by a firefighter to gain access to the vehicle when the occupant was unresponsive. Special Committee on Risk Management. 2143 is a communication received by the mayor from Tom Sather, Director of Development from the Great Lakes Companies, requesting to have their condominium construction loan limit increased to 16 million and to have the development agreement amended to accommodate this accelerated build-out. Finance. 2144 is a resolution authorizing assigning the city's right to certain license bond proceeds. That will go to finance. Alderman Groff. Your Honor, I would move to convene in closed session under the provisions of Section 1985-1A of the Wisconsin Statutes for the purpose of conferring with legal counsel for the city who is rendering oral advice concerning strategy to be adopted with respect to the English Manor et al. versus City of Sheboygan et al. lawsuit. Move this second to go into closed session. Is there any objection? Any discussion? Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Stephen? Aye. Vanderwill? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Perez, 13 eyes. Motion carried. Take a five minute break and we'll be back by 5 2.
Okay, go ahead, Alderman Graff. Um, um, then, just so that everybody, I asked for suspension and suspension was granted. Correct. Therefore, um, I would request that uh, the resolution uh, 2137, which is authorizing the city attorney to consult with Quarles and Brady, LLP relative to defense of claims related to the development agreement with Great Lakes, um, that that resolution be put upon its passage. Moved and second to resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, it was an interesting discussion that we had a closed session. And I'd just like to say that uh, I am going to vote against this resolution. Uh, simply because I, I feel uncomfortable in dealing with Quarles and Brady uh, uh, at this point. Uh, we spent quite a bit of money uh, with, this, with this firm. Uh, in no way do I want to cripple uh, Steve's, uh, Attorney McLean's ability to defend the city. Uh, and in no way do I not want the city to be defended. Uh, I have a problem with the amount. Uh, it is an amount that I don't agree with for additional consulting uh, because I believe that we have already paid a substantial amount to this law firm uh, for part of that consulting. And as, I, um, as I've noted in the summary of the, the attorney billings from Quarles and Brady, about $1,200 to $1,500 uh, was already paid for that specific uh, consultation dealing with the room tax issue. So I'm, uh, I'm uncomfortable in, in supporting a resolution like this, so I will uh, respectfully vote against it. Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Steve, would I be in violation of the closed session law if I asked you that question about the $9,000 again? No. Okay. Um, I'm sure the citizens are wondering what is being done to make sure we don't exceed $9,000. Would you be able to answer that for me again, please? Yeah, I would, uh, if council were to pass this uh, document, I would Call and I would write also uh, uh, quarrels and indicate that the council has, has authorized me to talk to them, consult with them, uh, not asking them to do uh, drafting of documents or anything like that, or uh, acting to act in a legal capacity in, in the lawsuit, but to consult with them, and that uh, the, that. Uh, the limit on that authority is nine thousand dollars. If they're not to exceed that, and if the council can't pay for any more than that, <coughs> thank you. Okay. Do have another discussion? Would you call the roll, please? Weininger, aye. Bauman, aye. Bonet, aye. Doyle, aye. Graff, aye. Manny, aye. Mondemir, reluctantly aye. Moody, aye. Perez, no. Stefan. Vanderbilt, Warner, 11 ayes, 1 no. Motion carried. Under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? 